What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue, and today I'll be going over the legendary crafting process. This will be the first week that it is possible to craft your own legendary, and some people might not know exactly how all of it works. This video though should hopefully explain it all pretty well, so let's see exactly what goes into the process of crafting a legendary in Shadowlands. So, legendary items have been in World of Warcraft since the very beginning, and have gone through many changes over the years. For Shadowlands though, we will be able to make our own piece of gear and empower it with a legendary effect, giving us a lot more control over what effect we have, what stats we want, and what item level we want the piece of gear to be as well. However, before you can make a legendary, you kinda need to meet the character who's gonna be doing all the heavy lifting, the Rune Carver. You'll need to progress through the storyline a little bit at max level before you'll meet him, as he's kept in Torghast Tower of the Damned, but this is also a prerequisite to earning the memories of the Rune Carver in the first place. Oh yeah, he's probably related to me because he suffers severely from Hamster Brain Syndrome, which is very real and very dangerous, so you'll have to actually find his memories of each legendary power that he is able to craft. These will come from a number of sources, such as dungeons, raids, world bosses, PvP, and Torghast. I'll put a link to a Wowhead article covering the locations of everyone's legendaries in a comment below, but for you sneaky boy rogue types out there, I'll be doing several videos this week explaining what each legendary power we have and what it might be useful for, as well as where to get them. So, finding the memories of the Rune Carver is of course super important, but once you've brought his memories back to him, what do you do with them? Well, you need Soul Ash and a really awesome piece of specific crafted gear to imbue. Soul Ash is primarily earned from running Torghast Tower of the Damned. I've done a couple videos on Torghast in the last week or two if you need any extra info on it or advice, just as a heads up if you haven't seen either of those yet. Soul Ash can also be earned occasionally from some quest lines that will have pop up on occasion, such as earning 100 Soul Ash for freeing 10 of these blue chained up soul thingies in Torghast. Even some of your follower missions can reward a bit of Soul Ash as well, so always keep an eye out for things like that. Before you'll be able to craft any legendaries, you'll need to complete the quest Ashes of the Tower, which requires you to earn 1,250 Soul Ash, which is ironically the exact amount you need to craft your rank 1 level 190 legendary, so keep that in mind. The amount of Soul Ash you'll need to craft a legendary will change based on the item level of the piece of gear. For your lowest legendary, like I just mentioned, which is 190 item level, it takes the 1,250 soul ash. Just know that if you craft a lower level legendary, there is a process to upgrade it to a higher level one in the future, and the amount of soul ash is prorated based on what rank your lower version was when you upgrade it to a higher one, though you do need the higher item level piece of gear as well to combine and upgrade the lower one. For your legendary armor, this is going to be crafted from various armor and gear making professions like tailoring, blacksmithing, jewel crafting, and of course best of all, leatherworking. To learn these crafting patterns, you'll need to be of that profession and you'll need to talk with the rune carver which involves doing the quest chain and being max level. He'll then send you to your crafting trainer in Ouroboros with a memory of all of his crafting recipes and then you'll be able to learn how to craft them, which should require maxed out profession skill to do. There is a ranking system attached to these as well, which requires crafting the same piece over and over and over to unlock the higher ranks, though again that'll be part of the upgrading legendary video that I am still working on. Now before you just go out and craft a piece of armor or buy it off the auction house, you'll need to see what armor slot your legendary power is going to go on. Each legendary power will have two armor pieces it can be imbued on, so you want to make sure you buy or craft the correct one. For example, as Outlaw, Celerity can go on either a pair of shoulders or a ring, whereas the Master Assassin legendary power can go in either bracers or a ring instead. So yeah, just seriously keep an eye on which power you want to imbue onto your gear, cause it'd be a real big waste and really silly to accidentally buy or craft the wrong piece. You'll also need items called missives. Missives are made from the inscription profession, and are used to select what secondary stats you want on your crafted gear. There will naturally be four different ones, one for each secondary stat, and you'll need two different ones for your legendary piece, because you can't just put the same stat missive in a piece of gear twice, so make sure you choose, but choose wisely. As far as I'm aware, there is no way of changing the stats on a legendary once you craft it. 
So now that you hopefully have the legendary power you wanted, the crafted item that you need for that legendary power, two different stat missives, and Soul Ash for this rank 1, item level 190 piece of armor, then we're just gonna go over to the Rune Carver and slot all of this into his little UI setup thingy by selecting the piece of armor we want to imbue first. Then we'll select our legendary power, and then our two stat missives. Then we'll click this button here and voila! An in-game cutscene of the Rune Carver slapping the like and subscribe button simultaneously and a nice shiny orange piece of gear as well. Due to the amount of soul ash you can earn being very time-gated, you'll really want to make sure you want that particular legendary power. Some folks may decide to actually wait on crafting these because it's assumed that more legendary tuning might happen before the mythic race for world first for Castle Nathria starts, and if something is overpowered or overtuned, it'll probably get dropped down. However, I would like to hope that with the extra time Blizzard had on beta due to the delay of Shadowlands that this won't be the case. But I guess we'll see when Castle Nathria opens, especially given the excessive sweeping nerfs a lot of legendaries got onto them on beta, and then they were tuned up a little bit afterwards. So maybe nothing will happen, but it sometimes is better to err on the side of caution. Legendaries in most cases, at least for rogues, are only like a 3-5% DPS gain for all of them except for like Celerity, which is a bit of an outlier, so that's the only one I'm a little leery of crafting early. The legendary crafting process should hopefully now be at least a little easier to understand now that we've gone through all of the steps necessary to make one. I do know that a lot of the best legendaries that are out there in Sims right now are coming from the Castle Nathria raid for quite a lot of classes and specs, so you might not want to make one right away if you're trying to make a higher ranked version of that particular legendary, but at least you'll know how to do it without having to spend your own materials or resources doing so. I hope this video was helpful to you, and if so, any likes, comments, or new subscribers are all fantastic ways of showing your support for the channel. If you're new around in my little corner of the YouTube algorithm, then I'd like to welcome you to come check out the rest of the channel. I do new uploads every week down a variety of content, ranging from guides, tutorials, add-on videos, weak aura videos, and obviously rogue-specific things as well. I'd also like to take this time to thank all of my regular viewers, commenters, subscribers, and especially my patrons, who all help make these Sheba shenanigans possible. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.